I'm going to be real. I never expected to make a Jeff Dowden video this season, especially how we started the year. And that just shows where the Sixers are as a team, the hospital Sixers truly right now. Anyway, yesterday's game was, was tough, a tough loss. A few bright spots, though, I'd say Paul Reed and Kelly Oubre were pretty impressive. And then the last one was the biggest surprise of the game. One of the most impactful players during that game was Jeff Dowden Jr. He finished the game with the highest plus minus on the team at plus 17. And when he checked out of the game in the second half, the Grizzlies immediately made their comeback. Personally, I wanted to see him come back in the game and finish the game because he was really good as a player. 10 points, 6 assists for him on the evening. He actually set a career high in points in the first half. I think one obvious thing that stood out to me is my guy is a very smart, intelligent basketball player, knows where to be on both ends of the floor at all times, and just makes quick, smart decisions. And with Tyrese Maxey missing time with a concussion, still no timetable for his return, this is Jeff's best chance to secure his spot at the highest level in the NBA because He's been stuck in the G League. And honestly, I'm voting for him because he's 26 years old. This is probably one of his last chances as a player to get that guaranteed contract. And just think about it. Look how injured the Sixers had to get for him to even get an opportunity. Once you get stuck in the G League system, it seems like it's so hard to get out of. And it's pretty clear Nick Nurse likes him as he said this in an interview and he played him last year in Toronto to end the season. Good player, he really knows how to play the game, right? He's got a good feel for for um, running an offense, when to, you know, he's, he's kind of a orchestrator, but he will step in and shoot if you leave him or he'll, he'll get a bucket here and there. Um, and he's a really good defender, he's a good on-ball defender. And seeing him versus Brooklyn, that was my first experience watching his game. It was pretty mediocre, but as expected since he just got on the team. And at times during that Brooklyn game, it looked like his teammates didn't even know who he was. So after yesterday, I did some research. It turns out Raptors fans were not happy with him getting waived this preseason. Shout out to Amateur Hour Sports, a Raptors content creator. He made a video four months ago called The Hidden Truth behind Jeff Dowden's release from the Raptors. The comments section is filled with fans pissed that they cut him, stating he deserved it over other players who made the team. It was a good feeling because it shows we aren't the only fan base who obsesses over the 13th or 14th man on the roster. And guess what? The main reasons for cutting him really weren't basketball reasons. It was because they already had wrapped up guaranteed money in other guys like Malachi Flynn Garrett Temple, so they would have had to cut guaranteed money and still pay those players and then sign Dowd into a deal. And because of those circumstances, they believed it wasn't worth it for all that. And a play that stuck out to me in his debut was this. He has Nick Claxton on him. The offense stalls deep into the shot clock. He's forced to create something. Notice he full turns to Tobias to give the impression it's a dribble handoff. Psych. He's driving quick bursts of speed, and that breaks down the defense. Great skip pass to Batum, wide open shot created, miss. Overall, it was unfortunate for him because he was in a unit that just couldn't buy a shot. And then he had a bad turnover a couple possessions later. Not the best debut, and it kind of gave Sixer fans a bad taste in their mouth. But then a day later, his IQ on the defensive end of the floor stood out to me. He's positioned great here, taking away the corner but still was able to close out on his guy and then reads exactly where he's going, meets him there, cuts him off, pokes it free for the steal, and it leads to a bucket on the other end of the floor. He has very quick instincts, quick hands to poke balls free, pause, gets Jake LaRavia here, and then Gigi Jackson in the second half. It seems like passing also comes natural to him, but he kicks it out to Tobias. One more, then he beats the closeout immediately, recognizes Reed is open, easy layup. Later in the game, he catches, recognizes that the driving lane left is butt naked open. He takes it, gets to the paint, perfect lob to Paul Reed. The best NBA role I see him having is like a Haywood Highsmith type. Miami kind of uses him as just an extra two-way guy who can do a little bit of everything on both ends of the floor, but nothing at a crazy high level. I would say his defense playmaking and feel for the game of basketball are his bright spots. He's been shooting a good percentage from distance in the G League. It hasn't translated to the NBA level, but he really hasn't gotten any opportunity, any serious opportunity to take any of his percentages 
at the NBA level serious. He's also capable on and off the ball. He's a pretty high IQ cutter. He just got a great feel for the game. He's nothing special as a scorer, but he has flashes here and there in a variety of ways. Definitely not a starting caliber NBA player, knock your socks off a type of player, but he's definitely a very solid deep bench guy that can give you good minutes when your team is injured over the long course of a season. I expect him to get a chance moving forward as Maxi's status is still up in the air. We haven't heard anything really as of now. And I'm voting for his success because if politics weren't a thing in the NBA, he would have landed that legit NBA contract in Toronto. So yeah, hopefully he succeeds and maybe gets us a few lucky wins. I think he's a good defender and solid offensively. Nothing special, of course, but you can't complain. He's on a two-way contract, so... Yeah, check out my other videos. Have yourself a great day. Peace out.